do, I'll do some whole body. just kind of getting back into running off of breaking my kneecap. Um, and so a lot of when I'm getting just like back into the mechanics of running, I like to do barefoot running on the turf here. Um, I feel like it's good for kind of feeling out the form, feeling how I'm coming over my body. Um, and it's pretty like, I don't know, not too much impact. So yeah, honestly, it's pretty boring. It's just running easy laps around a turf field. This is honestly like no more than zone two heart rate. So probably never getting above like 130 at most. It's more about mechanics. Um, and then just making sure we're not going too intense more than anything. So yeah, with the heart rate monitor, it's almost using it more to like keep effort pretty low and controlled. pretty good running with that camera. I can be done. <laughs> Look, right now my knee's not quite good enough to do like the strides across, but normally I'd do like 30 minutes or so, just like super easy, and then 10 to 15 minutes, some sort of diagonals. Where we are right now in your recovery, how many miles a week are you running? Oh, I like just started back. <laughs> um, I don't even know. I probably did like no more than 20 last week. Um, I've been doing a lot of uphill skiing, but yeah, well, it's kind of just like taking it day by day right now, um, especially just because I hadn't really let myself have the time to just like fully rest for a while. It's been nice being able to take just like a nice slow build back up. How's your heart rate? I think it's pretty good. 99 right now, 100. Pretty, pretty nice. I think that was like probably zone two, maybe up into a little bit of zone three. I'm not very fit right now. <laughs> we are stopping at um, Whole Foods because I'm a bougie bitch um, and we're just picking up some groceries. I'm one of those people, I'm not, uh, I'm not well planned enough that I like get everything like in the beginning of the week and just meal prep all week. I'm the kind of girl that just like grocery shops like every day and just whatever I need for that day. I've had enough years of being like super psychotic about eating that I've kind of gotten to this point of it where it's like, 80% of the, like eating healthy 80% of the time and then having like just good nutritious stuff on the whole I feel like is pretty important but not really overthinking it I feel like that's I wish I had a better philosophy than that but it's like I think we get so bound up and like oh I have to eat this certain way or do this certain thing then I'll run fast and a lot of times it's like good enough is good enough and I think at least if you're trying to eat healthy, that's like 90% of the battle. But then also not getting like so wound up about it. I feel like I actually eat pretty um, like vegetarian. I really like kind of like tofu and rice and beans are kind of my go-tos. Um, and I like a lot of veggies, but um, I find that I, I feel a lot better when I'm eating pretty heavy fat. So I do a lot of like, a lot of butter and stuff. I think like protein is definitely important, but I think we go a little bit psychotic about it. Um, and it's like, at the end of the day, the Americans, we get so much protein on the whole. It's fine, like I lived over in Ethiopia for a little bit and, whoa. And it's like, they just eat 
so differently than we do. Um, and so I think it took a little bit of that to realize just like, yeah, you don't need like a steak every single night. <laughs> You're gonna be fine. Though I do like a good like bison burger every once in a while. Is there a go-to guilty pleasure? A go-to guilty pleasure, ooh. I feel like, this is gonna sound so, like, I feel like I don't really like believe in like the guilty pleasure thing. Like I've, I've spent so many years like really limiting myself that well, like, like that yeah, exactly. Like I don't like that phrase of just like, if you want to eat something, just eat it. Just it, like eat slightly less or something. Like you don't like, I really like brie. You don't need to eat an entire block like block of brie. <laughs> like you can have a little bit of brie and it's fine. Oh, actually, people are gonna at me for this. Pickled herring is the best thing in the world. This is like a Wisconsin thing. Shit is so good. Being able to just have an easy way to visualize how hard that I'm working and being able to look at like long-term trends, I think is really big. Like for me, like obviously on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm looking at pace, I'm looking at distance, time that I'm working out. I'm looking at my heart rate trends of like, okay, like on easy runs, how is my heart rate? trending over time. Um, how is my resting heart rate looking? Stuff like that. Um, yeah, I feel like generally I try to not look at like, it's so easy to get wrapped up in the day to day of just like, oh my God, my resting heart rate is higher on this day. It's like, how is it looking over the course of a month or whatnot? And I think that's the, ultimately the really good insights that I get from it. Which one are you wearing right now? Right now I'm wearing the Apex 2. I've been doing, um, a lot of times when I'm doing more like track focus or like road and track stuff, I'm wearing um, the Pace, just because it's so light. But I've actually been doing a bit more like stuff on trails recently. And so between like the skiing and the trail running and stuff like that, I feel like this has a lot of features that I really like. Like I was just climbing a mountain out in Germany that I'm just like, yeah, like stuff like that. It's really nice getting, getting to see your elevation gain loss, all that kind of stuff. Start. Bing. Train it part. I'll do, I'll do some whole body. Cool. Okay, so, so what we're, doing today? Um, we're basically just doing kind of like a light strength and mobility session. Um, general, like I'll do a longer lift a couple times a week, but um, generally pretty much every day I try to do some, usually like four or five different exercises, working on like different weaknesses that I've got. And so we're just gonna do a few of them today. Cool. In, the gra in the garage gym, the tinfoil paradise. Did you run at the UTMB? Um, no, we've gone the last few years. I technically am qualified for this year's OCC, so like the 50K version of it. But I'm like, TBD, if I don't make the 10K on the track, I might just lean in and try and do that this summer. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, um, I don't know. I really like the trail running and I love going out to UTMB because I feel like it's a really good, like, it's just a cool side of the sport. But no, we actually, um, we stole that off of a bridge by the finish line. And I actually dropped my phone down a drainage pipe to get that. <laughs> did you get the phone back? No. We did. Oh, you did? Okay. Luckily, because I was it was in the middle of the night and I, we were using the phone as a flashlight. So the flashlight was on. So we were able to fish it out of the <laughs> sewage grate. <laughs> Somebody's gonna comment on these and be like, her form is so shit on these strength <laughs> exercises. Internet commenter uh, workout. I've experts. heard everything. I loved Ali Ostrander's recent thing where she put up the comments of people on there where it's like, she simultaneously looks too old and too young. The internet, it's a crazy place. Oh, God. Well, that's why I love, like, whenever I've posted these things about, like, posted shit on the internet about, like, the crazy shit people have, like, said or done, or people are like, you must be lying. I'm like, no, the internet really is just that bad. I'm not gonna do, like, the Emily Enfeld style, like, deadlifting 300 pounds. I'm very lightweight when I do these. Mm -hmm.
Being obviously a distance runner, lifting isn't the focal point of training, no. but uh, it's honestly mostly for just like injury prevention or working on like the little weak spots. That's why, especially for marathon training, with it not being as much of like a power event, not like the mile or something, um, it mostly is kind of just like this refining aspect of like okay, find your weaknesses. What do we need to really be like focusing on, honestly, what's sore? And then do more of that. So like what I'm about to do now, uh, I'm just gonna take this off. Um, and it's like just so much of what I do is just the same motions over and over and over. And so a lot of times it's just giving my body a little bit of a different stimulus. Um, and that will help a little bit, just give a little bit more of that all around strength that I need, especially in the late stages of a marathon. But no, like, it's funny because I used to like ski race in high school and I would do a lot more like actual, like heavy, heavy lifting. Um, and so this is all just like, <laughs> this like weak ass shit now. <laughs> It also always looks ridiculous because like I live right by this school and so kids are always walking back and forth past there and they're so probably seeing me in here being like this crazy old lady that lives in the house. Have you always had this little home gym in your garage? Um, yeah, but it's kind of like it just reorganized it a little little bit ago. Um, my treadmill actually wasn't over here. It was over at a friend's house and so just got the woodway moved back over, so that helps. Got that at a garage sale. I don't know, I kind of like- I'm just trying to put up like generalized inspiring things. <laughs> what is uh, rule number five? Rule five is um, harden the fuck up. <laughs> what about one through four? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Get to five. I think it's from like a cycling book, like the Illuminati or something. But yeah, that's so what. Uh, that was the last thing that John yelled to me during the Olympics. Just rule five. Rule five.
This I feel like, I, don't get me wrong, I love a good normal plank, um, but I feel like having to kind of control for the changing pressure of like as you go out, having a lot of it is all about like keeping your hips stable. I don't actually know if I'm doing that good of a job. People can point me out online, but it's like trying to hold that core stable as it extends out and then back. And a lot of times I'll get lazy with it. I'll just try and go too quickly. So it's like, I have to purposely try and like slow myself down a little bit, <laughs> tighten up the core, hold that steady. And then working my legs and getting speed through the hamstrings while holding this tight and steady because that's effectively all we're doing when we're running. I aqua jog a lot. I fucking hate swimming. <laughs> so much, it's like, I do enjoy going over to NAU because a lot of people will be in the pool there. It's like you show up at noon at the NAU pool and like half the runners in town are in there. I've had to be in the pool a lot over my career and I fucking hate the pool. <laughs> my my go-tos are usually, um, I've got an elliptical on a trainer in there. I was doing that a lot um, when I was trying to cross train for trials. I'll run on the lever here. This has been a godsend for me. Um, and then honestly, uphill skiing is like, I think uphill skiing is the best bang for my buck I can get. Um, but I have to keep that one on the down though. <laughs> but yeah, I've kind of like come to the place where like, I almost use cross training more as like a fun activity like as a mental break, especially if I'm training hard, but. This is the Corey McGee? This is the Corey McGee. I think I did see this video on Instagram. Well, these like yielding exercises have been like really hot on Instagram recently. These have been really good for my knee, actually. Whew. And that actually gets my heart rate up pretty well. I'll be interested to see. Whoo! 120! Oh, baby! <laughs> okay, I was going to do... Oh, I was going to do farmer carries, maybe. See, this is how this goes. I'm usually just kind of like, ah, what do I feel like doing today? Maybe I'll do some step downs. So much of what we do as runners is just the same movements over and over. And so getting a little bit of like diversity of movement, I think people get in their head like, and maybe this isn't the best example because I'm the bitch that's always hurt, but like, <laughs> I find that it's like, it doesn't need to be this huge, big specialized lifting program or whatnot. Like as long as you're kind of diversifying your movements a little bit, I think that just helps. Nice. So. I'm really sloppy on these right now because I haven't been able to do them for months. I also get really self-conscious sometimes when I go to like the Flag Athletic Club gym because I'm really not that coordinated with a lot of my stuff. And so I'm like, yep, professional athlete over here. <laughs> but that's kind of part of it is like my proprioception is really off right now because I have been injured. So it's like just kind of building that back up. That's how you know this is real. 
I'm not even trying to look good doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I like to do shorter stuff, but like move through it pretty quickly. And so it actually does like keep my heart rate up a little bit better. Um, I think it was like an old like Sebco thing that I read from back when he was like running really well, that like his weightlifting routines were effectively like almost another like aerobic stimulus. So I kind of like to treat it like that. A lot of what I'm doing for my rehab right now is um, I use like my sidekick tools, whatnot, because there's a ton of scar tissue. This is the injured knee, ton of scar tissue around the front here, especially after I got PRP. And so it's like, it's just fucking brutal having to like break it all up in the front there. Um, so honestly, that's a lot more of it. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just like, it's such a day-to-day -day thing. You just figure out on the day what you need to be doing. The, the like takeaway from these videos is going to be just like I am so chaotic with <laughs> everything that I do. Okay. That's it. That's it. Get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going?